is it the timer going? Yep. Okay. So uh, we've been wanting to get a teletype. So there originally was a teletype that went with this machine, but it disappeared somewhere along the line. There are teletypes out there, but you know they can be hard to find and expensive and whatever. But it was kind of in the back of our mind. Eventually, we want to get a teletype. Well, lo and behold, um, this is the most ridiculous coincidence that has happened in a long time. Um, up popped an ad on Craigslist in Duluth for an estate sale of basically a guy who used to be a radio, TV repairman, collector, who had a basement full of crazy electronics, telephone, TVs, radios, tubes, I mean, you name it. Okay. Including a printing press. Including a printing press, including an IBM 026 card punch. Um, more on card punches later, I have a really cool find. Um, including an ASR, two ASR33 teletypes, which are period correct for this machine, an ASR35, which looks like a tank uh, teletype, and um, a Deck Rider 3. Um, we don't have an unlimited budget, but we decided we had to go down there and see um, see if we could find a teletype and if it were in good shape. And lo and behold, what we have here is two teletypes because um, we basically uh, gave them the sob story of our Skunk Works PDP-12 restoration project. Uh, we told them it was for the university, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We bought one, and they threw in the second one, which is in worse shape as a parts machine. So, uh, what we have here are two, uh, you know, appropriate for the era teletype machines. Um, these ASR 33s. If you're wondering what this is, this is the paper tape reader, and they also gave us three boxes of paper tape. So you can see we've got a um, nice singer like the sewing machine company. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Paper so tape. Made computers in the early days. So, very, uh, yeah. so Warren, tell us about these teletypes. Well, who knows where they came from. Uh, her son was a, uh, in the Navy, and I think he may have picked them up. Uh, we're not sure exactly what the back history is. This has a, uh, uh, a Com Data Corporation call control unit, apparently with a modem in it. There's two cards here. Hmm. So uh, we'll have to disconnect that and directly wire it. Or we'll have to run a phone wire, uh, a telephone line from here to there, so you can dial up the 12. <laughs> I, I would love to dial up the 12. That would be amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so it's in pretty good shape. It's uh, and this is it's the, already yeah. been modified because of the oh, gummy yeah. head, because so, of the gummy head. You know, um, when when stuff like this goes for sale, you know, of course collectors come out of the woodwork. So we met a, a great guy named John, um, who I don't know his last name, but he showed up from the Twin Cities. He's got a couple teletypes, but he wanted yeah. to see what there was, and you can see this. Um, there's a, a head here, which is basically the hammer, right? Yep, it's a little rubber bumper. And um, that rubber piece wears out over time. Well, actually, the old ones oh. turned to gum. gum. Ew. So this is uh, even less than the gummy bear. It's uh, yeah. it's gooey. Yeah, gross. And, yeah, and so I took it off, and he had brought a little piece of uh, Tyvek, I assume, tubing. Yeah. Which is the standard easy way to fix it. Which, and uh, uh, we'll get some silicon uh, caps from uh, the guy that makes those new. Yeah, so so nice of the guy to, to give us this tube when we told him what we were doing. and uh, He's he just... afraid somebody was going to try to power it up and oh. add it to the type. <laughs> yeah, so, oh right, because if you get goo if you all over the one, type. If you look at this one, it's just yeah. a rubber cap. This one is also goo. Yep. So yep. you can see, you know, get it all over my finger. Yeah. But it's basically a steel button. Oh. And then it, this is meant to slam into the type and yes. hit it up against the paper. That's what actually makes the imprint. Of course. And uh, So steel buttons ramming into your type I, uh, aren't good. Yeah, if I, uh, I don't know if I can click this or not. There's a solenoid back here that... Yeah. Uh, that fires that and then it slams in there. Sure, sure. And when this goes away, you have steel against steel yeah. on the type, 
and it mangles the letters. Yeah, and, you and, can't and, really and recover you, from that. It's hard to get new ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so what so, is the... And this this is the good one with the, with the modem. Um, well, they're all about the same. This one, if you look here, you see this whole piece, this tab? Yeah. Notice these two are the same? Yeah. Can you come over here and look at this one? And you'll see that parts have been don donored. Oh, yeah. Um, the d distribution panel is missing. Yeah. No call control unit. Yeah. Um, so what's the, the, the rate on these? These are basically 10 characters a second, 110 baud. Okay, okay. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Yeah. And, and as, as you have pointed out in the past, or explained to us in the past, they're basically electromechanical, right? Yeah. So uh, you've got these bars, and the keys are going to... These are the actual contacts. Right. And they wire across here into the distribution. This is the distributor. So as you release it, it picks the various signals, and that's how it generates the serial data. Mm. So that's just copper and a carbon brush switch. Yeah. yeah. The same thing happens when things come in for a, a character. So back here, this is the wheel, the clutch that releases when you get a character. Yep. And you see there's little cams back here and little levers. Yep. And then that will move these little bars that come across here. And you can see them down in the bottom. Yeah. Then those will lift up as, and then that mechanism, the bar mechanism, will cause this to rotate and ka chunk, ka chunk. Hmm. Is that a technical term? Yeah, highly technical. Yeah, if cool. you've ever heard of old teletype going, it's ka yeah. chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. Well, hopefully someday. Uh, so we're not we brave will. enough to turn this on quite yet. I think no. we'll leave it for a uh, student project. Yes, a, a different project. Um, yet. Uh, we're we're looking forward to having a teletype. This one has the base, which Correct. is which is nice. It um, does have the uh, loop supply in it. We opened it up and it has a loop supply. In what's it. a loop supply? Um, on current loop, you have to have a power source somewhere. Okay. And Deck did it kind of different than most machines. They expect the loop supply to be in the teletype. Okay. When in most cases the teletype is kind of a peripheral out in the middle of nowhere, so we power the loop from the main office. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So you have to have a loop supply, so there's a little power supply in the bottom. Huh, that's cool. And that's, that's very cool. That's, that's to produce power for yeah. the current. For the current line current. itself, yep. yeah, okay. Very cool. Now, uh, you were saying we are missing some plastic page holder thing or something? Yeah, neither of these have the, uh, the copy holder. If you remember your normal ones, There'll be a metal frame that comes up here, yeah. and a tablet, yeah. and a little metal bar that comes across here, and that's your copy holder. Yeah, kind of like a clipboard yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, clipboard, yeah. Okay. So when you're keying things in, that's where you put it. Yeah, in. yeah. And it's, uh, it's up and with the slot so that the it clears the paper and the paper cooling out. Yeah. So we didn't get the spindles that quite often gets lost. Sure. No spindle for the paper tape supply. Yeah. Same issue. But we can we can make make those. A chunk of three quarter inch doll. And yeah. Nobody will know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll paint it or something. Yeah. Maybe we'll three D print it. We've got some three D printers yeah. here, so that'd be cool. So in general, you know, it's it's a bit of a project. Yeah. Yeah. The um, the call unit is currently, you know, neither of these have the switches on the front for local remote. Okay. But uh, we can we can fudge that. Cool. The other thing that's missing is there's actually a an aluminum badge that goes on oh, here that okay. says teletype. Sure. Mm. Non essential, but cool. Too bad. But uh, either way, we just uh, we think this is like the greatest stroke of luck in the world that uh, we just happened to get you know one and a half teletypes that all were already in Duluth. Uh, with tapes, with a parts machine. While Warren was here, he could look at it and, and say, yeah, this seems reasonable, and versus, no, this had a family of mice living in it. Um, yeah, so for being in the basement for, who knows, 40 years? Yeah. 
they're not bad shape. All the motors are free. And uh, uh, this belt is pretty good. This belt is, is probably needs to be replaced. But sure. It'll probably run another 10 years if you don't, don't use it. Cool. This platinum is pretty hard. And then this one, if you feel it, there's a little really a zone. Yeah, there. there's a little give to the but rubber it needs, still. It needs, to be, it needs to be rubber renewed or whatever. Sure. Well, anyway, uh, pretty exciting stuff. We're glad this worked out. And, uh, yeah, we're very grateful. So, cool. That's it.